The views and opinions expressed on Black Talk Radio News belong to the host and guests and do not necessarily represent the views of the Black Talk Radio Network or the Black Talk Media Project. This is Scotty Reed with a Black Talk Radio News Report. On this segment, we want to take a look back at the Grenfell Tower fire which occurred in the UK on June 14th this year. Uh, The Grenfell Tower is a 24-story, 220-foot-high building. It is a block of public housing flats in North Kensington, the Royal Borough of Kensington, and Chelsea, West London. It caused at least 80 deaths and over 70 injuries. A definitive death toll, let me back up, A definitive death toll is not expected until at least 2018. To give us some insight as a resident living in the UK, we have Melissa, who is actually a volunteer with the Black Talk Media Project and who provides invaluable assistance to our media operations. And Melissa, in talking to you before this kind of hit home as you used to live in that area. Yes, that's right. I used to live in um, West London uh, in an area known as uh, Ealing. Um, And I used to live in and around Shepherd's Bush, which is probably about five or ten minutes away from uh, where the Grenfell Tower is located or was located. Now, we haven't really gotten a lot of information here in the United States on the Grenfell towers. Now, I do know some of the UK-based papers have been keeping up with it, but it's pretty much disappeared from international uh, headlines. So I want to just say I appreciate you coming on to speak with me so that we can inform the Black Talk Radio listeners of what's going on uh, with our family members overseas, because I understand that the Grenfell Tower had a large number of non-white people as residents. Is that correct? That is correct. So that part of London uh, has uh, a significant number of uh, non-white people living there. Um, When I was living there, which is probably some 10 years ago, it was an area where lots of West Indian and African people lived. Um, Although it's now subject to gentrification and people are being pushed out, uh, it still has a significant number of non-white people living there. If you could, has there been any kind of reports? Now, we know, for example, they say that the cladding, uh, which is an aluminum siding, which has some sort of, uh, I don't know the proper uh, word for it, but poly, uh, urethrine, some sort of highly flammable materials, which was packed under this aluminum. And they say that is what caused the fire to spread so extensively. But have the, have the authorities come out with a cause of the fire yet? No. So what's happened here is that um, in the aftermath of the tragedy, lots of people were different entities. So whether or not it was the council uh, fire brigade and other agencies were starting to point the finger around what could have caused the fire. Um, and then that was probably in the first few days of the event happening. And then what suddenly happened was radio silence. Um, when it became clear that um, the extent of, of this tragedy um, and the fact that there was going to be a national inquiry, that's when everyone decided that they would no longer give any sort of speculation or information they would only do it in the form of answering questions for the inquiry, and that is yet to be held. So in terms of getting any information about how this started, why it started, um, people are just in the state where they're speculating. There is no specific information that's coming out. Speaking of Mm -hmm. speculation, because when there is a lack of information coming out uh, from those responsible for gathering the information, It is quite natural for people to speculate. So I want to do a little speculating myself. I have been reading about attacks on Muslims. Like, for example, I read an attack about an attack where there was something like a funeral or a gathering for a wedding. 
And I've been hearing about these attacks where people are taking vehicles and running them into the crowd of people who may be standing outside of those places. So it seems to me that they're there that specifically non-white people classified as Muslims are being singled out and untargeted as a group in Europe, if not the UK specifically. So Melissa, that leads me to believe that there's a strong possibility that the Grenfell, Grenfell uh, Tower fire could possibly be arson. Your thoughts? I would say uh, when this first broke out, that was one of the uh, thoughts that came to mind. Uh, because one of the things that hasn't been clear is how this fire could possibly have started. There was speculation about it starting because of a faulty fridge in someone's flat. Uh, that from my point of view, doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's the story that has been repeated the most. Um, given the people that do live or that were resident in those flats, um, it's highly likely that arson uh, was possible. But, I mean, I can't attest to that. It's just me guessing that that is a motive. And I say that because when you look at the names of a lot of the victims, uh, they do have Muslim-sounding names. Um, certainly in the first few days when they were listing them out in the newspapers, that was all that you saw. You had Muhammad's and um, Hamid's and Fatima's. Those were the names that you saw listed as the victims. So there were a lot of Muslims that were affected by this fire. Since and actually, as an additional note, um, there was around the same sort of time, there was uh, someone that ran a vehicle into um a group of Muslims as they were um, breaking for Ramadan, um, and that resulted in fatalities as well. Uh, it was a white person, to the best of my knowledge, that was arrested for that, um, and actually not very much has been said uh, about that particular case uh, in recent weeks either. Thank you for that additional bit of information. Now, since the Grenfell Tower Fire. There has been a flurry of activity by authorities in the UK. And I understand from The Guardian that testing is underway for local authorities and other social housing landlords to identify high rise blocks where unsafe building material is in use, like the cladding that was attached to the Grenfell Towers. And they have identified quite a few buildings. Yes, that's correct. So um, I think it was two weeks after the, the fire, there was so much concern around how this cladding could have been used on Grenfell that uh, other councils uh, took the initiative to start testing their own buildings uh, to see if they uh, had similar cladding or similar fire safety issues um, associated with their buildings. And um, around, as I said, the end of June, I think 95 buildings were identified. Um, and by that, it meant that they failed combustibility tests. So when they submitted uh, various cladding material to an agency for testing, it came back as unsafe. Um, and that was at the end of June. And I think since then, more uh, buildings have been identified as uh, failing in basic fire safety. I will assume that the purpose of identifying these buildings is so that this cladding can be removed um, I don't know that for sure. I have, I, I would assume that that's the logical, you know, reason that one would test them is they plan to replace them. So that would be quite a financial undertaking. And so what do you think may happen? Do you think that they will actually replace the cladding or, or what? Uh, my gut says that they won't. Um, my gut says that with the financial situation that we're experiencing at the moment, so we're supposed to be, supposed to be uh, experiencing uh, austerity measures here in the UK. So most of the councils are either going to have to get special funding or uh, we'll have to, uh, sorry, we'll have to get special funding or we'll have to figure out how they're going to reallocate their existing funds in order to make those buildings safe. Whether or not they're able to claim uh, any compensation from from the companies that originally sold it or fitted it to those buildings, I don't know, but I think it's going to put a substantial burden on most most councils. Um, and um, 
but I think that um, ultimately it's going to be difficult for them to actually uh, change the planning on most of those buildings. So they'll take it over a number of years. I know that there was an initial effort to provide relief and assistance to the victims of the Grenfell Tower, but I recently read that they're not getting all the help that they need. Can you give us some insights into that and what you've been hearing in terms of the victims uh, being helped? Other than the fact that this tragedy happened, I think the second worst thing that could happen is the response of the local council to the needs of the people that have now been left homeless, um, without families, and just dealing and reeling from this tragedy. Um, many people have been left um, in hotel accommodation, uh, which means that they are only secure in terms of their housing needs for a couple of days at a time. Um, information has not been forthcoming. They don't know where they're going to be living um, or how they're supposed to deal with their day-to-day -day activities. Um, you may have seen uh, reports of the local council members who should be dealing with this actually hiding out in the building when, uh, when uh, confronted by um, Grenfell victims um, who wanted some answers. They've just been hiding out and in fact it's caused the resignation of several of the council ministers because they've just failed completely in their duties. Um, not only that, people, uh, many of these people have young children, so they are now displaced. Um, it's been very, very difficult for um, parents to get their children to school, uh, to know from one day to the next how they're going to manage that, manage their relationship with their families in terms of finding support that they need. So there's just a whole bunch of things that we take for granted right now that are not being provided to those victims. Um, one of the other things is just uh, to do with the, if I break it down, the first thing would be just getting replacement housing. Uh, on the one hand, they're being told they'll be rehoused in the local borough. Um, and then a couple of days later, you'll hear an announcement that says that the council's not going to guarantee that um, they'll be housed wherever they, wherever housing is available, whether or not it's in the borough or in surrounding areas. Um, so people have no certainty around where they're likely to be rehoused. Um, you've got the issue of um, getting money in order to help them just for their day-to-day -day survival. You have to think that all their possessions were burnt up and destroyed, so people are having to start again. The, the fact that people were living in these uh, tower blocks meant that they were probably low-income uh, individuals, which means replacing these things is going to be very difficult. Um, although there were emergency funds that were created uh, to provide supplies of food and clothing, uh, it's not clear how people get access to those emergency funds. Um, and at the moment, the sentiment seems to be that whenever uh, some of, someone from Grenfell asks a question around how they're going to get their needs met, they're met with silence, indifference, um, or um, very little information whatsoever. So I would, although I'm not, I'm just someone looking on on this, um, I'm just dis disturbed and disgusted at the treatment of the victims. Thank you for speaking with us today about this tragedy. Is there anything in closing uh, that you would like to speak to the Black Talk Radio family of listeners about this situation that perhaps isn't being relayed to the public? Uh, the one thing that I would say is that... Um, there have been a number of disasters in this country, whether or not it's as a result of flooding, uh, terrorist attacks and other, um, and other things like that. Uh, and the response has been different. Um, and I think the reason it's been different is because of who those victims are. The victims of Grenfell are poor, non-white people. And the lack of uh, consideration that has been afforded to them is... I shouldn't say it's staggering because I'm not really surprised by this, but when you see it unfolding in front of you, um, it really is shocking to see how people can be treated in this country um, and the fact that their needs, their blatant needs, um, can be just ignored. And what's happened now is that, as I said, it's all gone to radio silence, and we are now looking at a time when people are reflecting on the mental health needs of firefighters. I think there's a documentary that's coming out later on this week to cover that. No one's talking about the mental health needs of the victims, the people that were actually involved in the fire, running, 
maybe losing their loved ones. No one's talking about that. So what this tragedy has shown is that we, we have very little regard for the most vulnerable people in this country. Thank you for sharing your perspective on this tragedy with us, Melissa. And also, thank you for the invaluable service that you provide to the oper- media operations of Black Talk Media Project. You stay safe behind these global enemy lines. Thank you.